Hi. Hello. Happy Friday. Well, I haven't set the alarm as usual. So that'll be the first thing that I've got to do while I'm chatting to you. Will be to do my alarm. Right, here we go. Timer. Timer, timer. There we go. Timer set. Why do I never do it before I start? I don't know. Because I'm stupid. I know. I got a pattern today by the post. But uh, it's four ply, so I don't know whether I've got the colours. You know. I will have to have a search. It won't be those colours, obviously, because I don't even have those colours. But we shall see where we're going with it, yeah. I've just been to the pair for a pedicure. I love having my feet pampered. I was discussing with the lady that was massaging and doing my feet and painting my nails and stuff like that. How it must be nice to be able to afford to go and get pampered, you know, whenever you wished. Without having to budget and think, hmm, is it in the budget this week or what? Yeah. She was telling me that she'd seen a programme where there was a guy who was a hairdresser. And his wife went in every single morning to have her hair washed and dried and done. I don't think I would quite want that extreme, you know. But it would be nice, wouldn't it, to go in and be able to have facials and whatever you, whenever you wished. And, you know, definitely like, you know, go to a spa without having to budget for it, you know what I'm saying. I don't know what your particular thing would be, what you would like to do, apart from going to a yarn shop and buy all the yarn you wanted, but, um, you know, what would be your particular sort of uh, luxury thing that you would like? Maybe you'd like to dine out every day. I don't mean McDonald's and places like that. I mean properly dine out, you know, proper decent meals. I think I'd like to do that maybe once a week, yeah. Go somewhere nice and... You know, where they wait on you properly and you don't chuck it at you in a box as you drive through, you know. Um, I definitely like a back massage and a foot massage. I think at least once a week I'd like that, yeah. Mm. Oh, the girls are barking. Why are they are barking? I have no idea because there's nobody at the door. And there's nobody anywhere near. You stop. Anyway, did you guess what I was making with the granny squares? Did you guess? I bet you didn't. I finished it. Hmm? Finished it. There it goes. I bet you never guessed, did you, that was going to make a little sweater? But you should have known, shouldn't you, that it wouldn't be anything like a, a bag or a granny square or a blanket. You know me better than that. Anyway, it's the same back and back and front. Well, it's not the same, it's different coloured squares on the back, but you know what I mean. Same design. There isn't a pattern, by the way, before you ask. It's in the old <laughs> noddle. So the sleeves I just did in stripes. Because I couldn't be bothered working out how many granny squares or whatever I would need for sleeves. So, there it is. thought it would be nice. Not for anybody in particular. But you know me. So as my love of patchwork continues, yeah. I got these in the post yesterday. Again, my favourite shop, Moonbeams and Mayhem. Patchwork. Oh, reserves. In a sort of woolly, nice material. And on the front, they've got pockets with dangles. <laughs> Just me. This is definitely me. And they're lovely and warm and they fit absolutely beautifully. Yeah. Moonbeams and mayhem. He said that they wouldn't, they were only up to a size 20, I think it said. And I thought I was a size 22. But there is bags of room in them. So, bags of room, as you can see. Plenty room. Same colours as my skirt, if you remember. That far back, when I showed you my skirt. Same colours as the skirt. So if I make a sweater to go with the trousers, It'll go with my skirt as well, won't it? And then I also got a pair, oh, but these are summer, summer pants really. 
They're only made of cotton. So you know what the weather's like here. These have also got a pocket on the side. Where's it gone? Pocket, pocket. Where have you gone? But it's got a patch pocket with buttons. But these are patchwork again. But these are in cotton. And also from Moonbeams and Megan. So this proves to me that unfortunately I'm going to be able to fit in more of their clothes than I thought I was going to fit in. Which is a bit bad for the, bu the budget. But I do love anything patchwork, you know me. If it's plain and boring, it ain't me, yeah. I'm wearing one of my, uh, what's this? Boho Spirit, I think this. Just a plain cardigan. Once again, no pattern, don't ask. <laughs> you should know better than ask me for a pattern, you know. If it is a pattern, I will tell you. If it's one that you can buy, I will tell you. I bought a whole pile of patterns. I think I told you. I think it was, um, no gosh, I've forgotten the name of it, but I told you last video. I bought a whole heap of patterns, but I don't print them off because um, my printer's not printing right colours. I think I told you that the other day. It's printing everything in blue and green anyway. So you would be very boring if I was showing you. <laughs> Maybe I should print just the front covers, even though they will be all blue and green. But uh, ink for this printer is so, so expensive. You're talking £40 for just one little ink cartridge. It'd be cheaper to buy a new printer. You know, I did look at one time into that printer where you, you know, you refill them with like bottles and that. I think the printer was about £300. I thought, no, not for the amount of things that I print, it's not worth it. So I'm going to have to sort of read them off the PC, so I can't really show you what I bought. Uh, I think it was called I'm a Little Rainbow Shop or something like that. Anyway, I, put, I did put the link in the last video I made. I think I wrote it underneath. Uh, but she was very, very reasonable. Everything was less than a dollar, um, you know, to buy the patterns. All right, you have to print them off, you know. So there's that involved, didn't there? That would cost you for the ink. But if you're one of those kind of people who can actually read it off your, you know, your tablet, your laptop or whatever, um, then you don't have to print them off, do you? And they're, honestly, they were less than a dollar each. They were baby patterns. So I'm going to be trying one of those. My friend Sarah, she's, she's actually used one and done one baby cardigan. But of course, I can't show you because I don't have it here. <laughs> I did ask her to take a photograph of the baby blanket she's just finished because it's absolutely gorgeous. She's done it in grey and white and it's got sort of like a flower in the centre and then it goes out into, into a square. So it was really, really pretty. So it's all right, I'm only being nosy. Cars coming and going, you know, there's so little anything happens on this street that when you hear a car door or anything, you have to automatically go, ooh, who's that? <laughs> it's next door going out. But uh, the weather today has improved. It's not quite so freezy cold, which is good because my son's just read the meter, you know, for the electric, and it's like, oh my goodness, how have I managed to use all that for the heating and that? You know, well, it's a, a combined meter, you know, the gas and the electric. Let's just call it like household utility. And it was like, oh my goodness me. As my son said, you better start making some bigger sweaters, you know, wearing them. I'm not too bad in here, actually, because I've got my log fire, so I can always light that. But uh, it does mean that, like, you know, the bathroom, my bedroom and places like that are freezing cold. And, of course, you've got to use the tumble dryer in this weather because it's not fit enough to dry anything outside. I'm waiting for my new scooter to arrive because... <clears throat> it's going to be a harbinger, a harbinger of good weather. It's like when we bought the sun loungers. We bought beautiful sun loungers for the back garden and everything. The weather changed and it went cold and the sun went in, yeah? So I know that now I'm getting a scooter with the top on, the rain will stop and it will be glorious. So I've got my fingers crossed that when the scooter arrives, I won't actually need it yeah 
Yeah. Oh, by the way, the swans that attacked me—they weren't swans at all. They were—they were geese. Yeah. And apparently, they've got form. <laughs> Everybody knows about this pair of geese. That there's two pairs of geese on the lake. One pair's fine. The other pair are very aggressive. And somebody apparently local had filmed them having a go at somebody. I said, well, luckily it wasn't me. Nobody filmed them having a go at me, I don't think. <laughs> if they do, or if they did, I shall put it on YouTube. <laughs> but apparently they're well known for attacking people. You know, it's a wonder they haven't finished up as roadkill or in somebody's pot, you know. But, because, uh, I mean, if there were swans, swans are protected species, but geese, I don't think they are. But I think somebody might miss them. You know, I think what it was, it was very, very cold weather and I'm sure somebody must go and feed them because there's not enough in that lake to feed anything. There's no fish and everything like that. So I think somebody must feed them and with it being such a bad day and slippy and icy and that, maybe that person hadn't turned up to feed them that day. And that's why they were being a little bit aggressive because they were missing their dinner. Who knows, yeah. <laughs> Oh dearie me. Well I still haven't been able to post my lady's jacket off to Canada because I watched Tracy, you know, I think I told you Crochet Rocks and she's been trying desperately to post uh, wool off, well yarn, <coughs> off to people in the States and she keeps getting told the same thing, no, no, no. It's been a ransom glitch or something, somebody in Russia had held Royal Mail to ransom. They wanted nine million or something to free it up. But I'm sure the technos will work their way around it without paying the nine million. Why should Royal Mail pay all nine million to some hacker? No. So I'm hopeful that they'll get it sorted soon. So myself will be able to post the jacket out and Tracy will be able to post her wool out, yeah. But Oh, it's been, yeah, it's been great. <laughs> I haven't done any, well, I have done a bit more of knitting. I think I've done about another eight rows of knitting. So it, it's growing but slowly. There's no point me showing you eight rows. It's only about that much it's grown since last time. And I keep meaning to do a video where I put my me, um, me hexagon jacket on my mannequin, you know, so I can see where I'm up to, how much more I've got to do before I oh, alter it anyway. I've done two pieces and stopped. They're not big enough to be full pieces for the jacket. They're just I've just stopped. I just sort of went off the whole idea. And I thought maybe if I pin it on the mannequin it might sort of spur me on. I mean what I've been using with the bits and pieces is bits that I've had in the house because it's been so cold. But I've just been out the back and I've noticed I've got stepping stones that go to my shed. I don't know when they arrived or when they got put down. My son's probably waiting for me to notice. <laughs> I've only just noticed. They probably went down. But they don't go out there unless I'm going out there, you know. So I can now go to the shed without getting my feet wet through in the wet grass. But it's so so cold in that shed and with the price of heating and that I am not leaving the, the, the heating on in there it's too expensive but I need to remember to go out there about a half hour or so before I want to go out because it's not a big shed as you've seen it's not huge so I went and plugged the heating in it's like an oil filled electric plug-in radiator thing uh, it would be warm enough in about a half hour to, to actually go in and stay in it, yeah. Because it desperately needs a good sort out, a good tidy. As I said before, it's not messy, there's nothing all over the floor. It's all on the shelves, but it's not in any kind of rhyme or reason, you know. I just want to have a sort out and put everything where it should be, which will take me a lot longer than I think it will because I have to keep sitting down. You know, my brain says go out in the shed. You need to spend an hour and you'll get it all done. And I get out there and I do one little shelf and I think my back goes, no, sit down, sit down. 
you're knackered. <laughs> you're old, you're knackered. Sit down, John. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear, dear. I did watch another video that somebody had, had said had I watched this lady. I think she's called Sheila's Knitting, Knitting Tips or something. Because somebody actually suggested, are you in competition with her? No, I'm not. She's a knitter. I'm a crocheter, so, you know, there's no competition, nothing at all. I did look at her video. She seems a very nice lady. Uh, she's a Geordie, I think. Newcastle, I think she's from. But she knit, I mean, she must sit, knit at a phenomenal rate, that girl. She must knit, knit, knit. So, oh, hello. <laughs> somebody wants me. So, but somebody had suggested I was, because my video had gone out at the same time as hers, somebody said, suggested I was in competition. I said, I'm not in competition with anybody. No way, that's not me at all, no, you know me. Live and let live, people put videos out, I watch them or I don't watch them, you know. Nothing wrong with Sheila, I would watch her, except I don't really knit, so. But I tell you, she's very prolific, if you're a knitter you must have a look, she's very prolific. I mean, she's a similar age to me. I think she's a year older, 78. But I tell you what, she must look like the clappers. <laughs> I couldn't do what she does. Oh, we. And they say crochet's faster, don't they? But at the moment, my crochet isn't. My crochet is very slow. I'm trying to sort of <clears throat> myself up a bit, but... I've, asked, I've been asked, actually, to make some little bits and pieces for um, a craft show that I have not being in it, it's a craft fair at the other knit clubs that I go to, they're having a stall. So I'm rapidly thinking of tiny little things that I can make for that. But it won't be my stall, if you know what I mean. Everything that I donate will be in aid of church funds. It won't be anything that, you know, I'll be making any profit out of. Um, and I'm still trying to think what I'm going to make for this craft fair that I'm doing in March. Again, it won't be anything... I'm not making garments or anything, it'll just be bits and bobs. But over here, you see, in the in the UK, we don't sell scrubbies and washcloths, and we don't sell towel toppers, nothing like that sells over here. And of course, to make a toy over here, you've got to adhere to all these rules and regulations and stuff. You can't just make something and put it on, you say, oh no, it's got to be this, it's got to be that, it's got to be British standards. So it's, it's not worth it. You have to sort of stay well away from anything that could be construed as a toy for a child. So, you know. So I don't know what I'm going to do, really. I'm still thinking, still thinking. I'm not much into bits and pieces making. And I'm definitely not into blankets and things like that. But I don't think they would sell anyway. You know, if I did make blankets, Baby blankets, maybe. Maybe we'll try one of those or something like that. I was thinking of just trying one of each of different things or maybe two or three of each of different things, you know, to see if anything sells, what will sell. As I said before, these craft fairs are very hit and miss in the UK. You know, I think perhaps if I was living in a different area, you know, where it was more touristy, more, uh, dare I say, upmarket. It sounds as though I'm being a bit snobby here, don't it? But the market for things in, in, in Fleetwood or surrounding areas is not that great financially. Um, I'm still thinking of ways, you know, to, to promote myself and sell my stuff. I'm still thinking of ways, but I'm lazy. I do admit I'm lazy. I mean, I was laughing at Tracy the other day when she said, I'm feeling, I'm very lazy. <laughs> and I thought, I know what you mean. My brain is thinking, promote yourself this way, promote yourself that way. Do this, Jana, do that, Jana. And when it comes to the crunch, I just sort of sit here and go, yeah, well, I, maybe I might try it tomorrow. Maybe I might try it next week. I need somebody with a great big cattle prod, preferably electric cattle prod, to go zip into my rear end and give me a poke and go do something, zip, get going. But it's very easy when you've got like spinal issues, mobility issues to sit and think, 
not be back shirting today. I don't think I'll do it today. Maybe tomorrow when I've taken my pills and stuff like that. The good news is I've changed my GP. So maybe I will get some help with some pain relief or proper pain relief. Who knows? <sighs> but the pharmacist did ring me up today. And she sounded a very nice lady. Which is such a change from the other pharmacist. You know, the one I wanted to punch the other day. So I never have to see his ugly face ever again. <laughs> so I don't have to get riled up and punch. Oh. I think it must be a methadone pharmacy as well because of the amount of, well, they look like druggies to me. But go in there, you know. Not quite the place I want to be in. So... I know they exist and I know they happen and I know they need help but when they're yelling abuse and swearing at the, you know, it's something you can do without, isn't it, you know, when you're sitting waiting in the queue for your turn, you know, and somebody's effing and jeffing and blinding behind you and it's not nice, is it, you know. So, I'm not used to that sort of thing. Maybe I'm ladylike, I don't know. Maybe I'm a snob. <laughs> My friend said to me the other day, we were talking about something, she said, do you think we're snobs? And I said, yeah, I think we are. <laughs> but I would like to prefer to say ladylike, yeah? Um, you know, not been shielded from that side of life most of my life, so I'm not used to it, yeah. So, yeah. So I'm going to think of what I'm going to crochet next. As I say, I'm thinking of little things I need for next Wednesday, really. For this tabletop thing that they're doing at church. Maybe a little headbands or maybe something small in that kind of way. I don't really know. I think I have some bits and pieces in the shed when I actually go out there in the cold, you know, uh, that I might have ready made up in there that I could donate if you know what I'm, where I'm at and where I'm going, you know. Ah. <sighs> Oh, brain fade, brain fade. Yeah, I need to get my brain in gear. I really do. I mean, it's what, quarter to four, and I haven't picked up a hook all day today. It didn't take that long to have the pedicure. <clears throat> and it didn't take me that long to look after the dogs when I came back because they'd gone out to town. It's one of my great granddaughter's birthday. Well, it was actually on Wednesday, but she's having a party tomorrow, Saturday. And so they'd gone to get her a present, so I never asked what they got her, so it's probably some kind of jewellery knowing because she's what sixteen, seventeen, something like that. So, you know, you can't exactly buy her a toy anymore, can you, you know? So I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking after the doggies again tomorrow, but it won't be all night because they're not staying overnight, they're coming back. They're going to the party, whenever it might be, and then they're coming back. So, if I'm doing my live, I may have the company of our little Rosie and G uh, I nearly said Gigi then. <gasps> wow. Rosie and Trixabel. Yeah. Trixie, or any other name we choose to call her, because she very rarely gets Trixie, because she's a bit on the naughty side. You know, I call her anything but Trixie, to be quite truthful. But Rosie is my darling, apart from the fact she barks at everything in sight but apart from that she's my little darling as well Rosie yeah. but I do miss my Gigi I do miss him bless his little cotton socks they've now got two other uh, little dogs um, which I've not met yet because I think I told you sadly Gigi passed away um, they've now got two they're chihuahuas but they've actually got longer hair they're not short hair like Gigi was. But he was my little cuddle bunny. I just miss the little cuddles I used to have of him. He used to cover everything in dog hair. Oh, God, I couldn't have anything. Everything I crocheted was, you know, had Gigi crocheted into it, you know. <laughs> but um, apart from that, I really, really miss that dog. That man. I miss my buster, of course. I miss him. But... Um, you know, I miss Gigi the most, yeah. And I miss our poppy that was here when we first came here. 
Uh, they all went sort of all at once, really. You know, we lost four of them in the space of two years. Yeah. Uh, that's the trouble with pets. They don't live long enough, do they? You know, you get settled into a routine with them and then sadly they pass away. Yeah. So I'm going to think of something to crochet. Maybe I'll crochet a baby cardigan of the new patterns that I've got. And then I can show you something next time. Because I need to start something for tomorrow, for my live, unless I do a bit more of my knitting. I can do knitting when I'm sort of talking to somebody, like at Knit Club I did eight rows on a Monday, and then I did eight rows on Wednesday, so I did actually do 16 rows. Which you think would grow fast because it's chunky, but it's got this cable pattern. And also I've got the same problem when I go to Knit Club on a Wednesday, the chairs have got arms on them. I mean, this chair's got arms on it, and I had to buy a four-inch cushion to put underneath the cushion to rise me up, so that when I'm knitting, I've not got my arms in the chair. It sounds silly, but when you go to buy your chair, you should take your knitting with you to see whether you can move your arms in the chair before you buy it, yeah. I miss my other chair. I think I've told you this before. It had... It was wider because it fitted me and two dogs on it and it also had padded arms which this one's got padded bits but it's got wooden ends on the arms and it's narrower I mean I'm not saying I need it for the width of me but I fit on it quite comfortably but it doesn't give me arm room <laughs> and if I sit on my sofa over there it doesn't have a, a, a rise up for my feet. You know, this one rises up and moves, it's a recliner. And also my TV's right, right behind you, behind the screen, the TV's there, yeah. So if I sat over there, over there, on Rosie's sofa, I can't see the TV. <laughs> oh, life is not fun. Yeah. But this, this, I mean, it's quite comfy, this recliner, but it isn't, it isn't craft friendly. That's what I was going to say, not craft friendly. Anyway, I'm going to leave you now. Hopefully you will join me tomorrow on my live. Nine o'clock if you're in the UK. Goodness knows what time it is if you're in the US. So. <laughs> I can't fathom out my own time scale, so I certainly cannot fathom out all the different time scales you have in the US. Yeah, so that's all I've got to say really, except I'm going to go and get my blanket, either get my blanket for my legs or I'm going to light the fire. <laughs> One of the two things I'm going to do. So no news on my scooter yet, it's probably going to be the beginning of February I would think, but it's not that long off is it? I've got my ex-husband's birthday in between. I need to get a card for him. That's telling me to shut up. And then it's my son's birthday at the end of the month. So I need to get something for him too. So I'm going to say bye for now. Hopefully I will see you tomorrow on my live. So bye bye.